Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Wednesday. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about Raspberry Pi 4. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand, Raspberry Pi caused a revolution when it was launched in 2013. Now, Raspberry Pi is not a computer. It's not like Xbox or uh, Apple. It's not a computer. It's a tool. It's a something that you use to learn more things. So it was very community powered. So everything about it from the hardware, basically, they will not ask you to license it. If like if you want to make a product using Raspberry Pi, you could do that. They will not ask you for licensing. So everything was open source from the software, which was using Linux distribution specifically made for it. And it was also open source so everybody was fixing it so over time like as in over years it became a big revolution like it became really really big and it started expanding now it expanded to a point where uh, universities and colleges started to buy like five thousand or six thousands of them sometimes and they bought something like this basically a server rack where you have that uh, like five thousand or six thousand raspberry pi question is why think of it this way if you are running a computer university you at some point in time you have to teach about supercomputers now at some point in time you will learn about supercomputers that they run on parallelization basically you will have same hundreds of things basically uh, let's say you have th running thread ripper you're gonna have 10,000 thread ripper that's how our modern supercomputers are uh, made basically they have off the shelf part everything about them other than GPUs most of the processor are literally server grade or basically market bought you can buy them but you have to buy thousands of them now that cannot be done with computer hardware it's way too expensive however Raspberry Pi because the maximum cost was like $35 uh, you can easily buy hundreds of them and the power consumption was low enough so you can actually uh, power it without requiring a like you know giant uh, server level power supply so using this you can give people a like you know hands-on approach how to code something how to actually write a program that can utilize this kind of multi-core processor so this was a really useful tool for university and college and like this was like a very this took off basically everybody was like building their own things and doing things and actually learning this was much better than doing it in a simulator doing it like you know uh, some kind of emulator this was like real because if you have this many things you will understand how hard it it is to network sync how hard it is to make sure the clock of every computer is the same like these are real things so this became a very big episode. many industry also started to make enclosures like a very tiny enclosure that was put in din rails for uh, industrial cabinet so basically they will put it there and it will act as a data catalog they will like connect it with whatever sometimes they will make their custom systems because it also has a G uh, general purpose input output pin so they will make their own thing and catalog it that's a very useful tool for industrial like this GYP using this they they can catalog data which is really handy for in, in industrial environments and maker community they just ran with it they just ran with it so this became a very big thing now if you want to understand more about how the heck this became this big you can check my detailed video about raspberry revolution so this was the foundation of it However, there was some serious limitation because it was old technology. The fact uh, they wanted to keep the cost down, uh, ask them to uh, like basically it forced them to use old products, basically old processor, old architecture. Everything was old. Now it was cheap, but it was old, which means it was very limited. So biggest limitation was the even though they had quote and quote uh, gigabit uh, in Ethernet port, it was not running at gigabit simply because the gigabit was not directly talking to the processor. It had it like it had to go through USB bus now usb was was usb 2.0 so the maximum speed somebody ever got was 300 mbps now 300 mbps is not uh, like you know very fast for internet but if you are doing anything local array like a local network local network can easily exceed this kind of speed like that's only 37 mbps basically uh, i'm uh, like if i try to directly copy my camera's sd card that goes up to 90 mbps so you can understand this like this speed was a very big limitation so that limited the network ability of this even though quote unquote it has gigabit it just was talking to usb bus and then usb bus itself even though it was like uh, they had multiple versions till this point uh, they never upgraded the usb 2.0 so usb 2.0 was the choke point you can't really do much with usb 2.0 like even mechanical hard drive spins faster than uh, usb 2.0 so you have to understand this usb 2.0 was like the final limitation now when it was launched the fact that it could do full hd was mind-boggling like this was in 2013 like full hd for 35 dollars that was amazing like people were like thinking about making everything from uh, youtube download to like media players and all that now at this point in time full hd is like okay okay like full hd is like okay like uh, you have to understand at that time like if you wanted to buy a full hd mobile phone that was flat out not possible like flat out not possible so at that time it was very uh, high tech but soon it became very obsolete 
then the fact it has only 1 GB of RAM and that was in the latest version because if you go early back the RAM was only 256 MB so that was not enough even though if you had processors that were like you know able to compile a lot of data it was not simply fed the processor was running idle simply because the RAM did not have enough bandwidth like RAM did not have enough data to feed the processor so that also co uh, caused a choke point so early days because it was such a good media player people wanted to make network attached storage they could not because everything was limited everything was limited to usb bus and the fact that ethernet is not powerful enough for like i told you like even my camera sd card can uh, you know uh, outperform this thing so that was the old limitation for their uh, idea of using old technology to keep the price down but this time in Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, they thrown it all out of the window. They are simply like, okay, let's go back to the root, redesign it from ground up. This time uh, they are using something latest. Now, how can they afford to do that? Well, they are big now. They can actually uh, mass order things. They don't have to be like, okay, we do not know how many units are gonna sold. They, they know, like they have reach. Now they can do a very high end processor for very low price. So they are pushing this architecture, single board computer architecture to the maximum. So first thing they did, they basically upgraded from 2 ampere circuitry to 3 ampere circuitry so you need a very powerful uh, USB-C power brick to run this and it will become apparent why they did that is basically now they have quad core uh, Cortex 72 architecture based uh, basically processors and it's running at 1.5 gigahertz that's good like that's good like that's, that's uh, powerful enough for like uh, a proper mid-range uh, smartphone like that's powerful that's not something that you can just uh, it does not do anything I can barely do web browsing uh, barely can run the 480p videos for YouTube. No, that can do things. Like, that is powerful enough to do things. On top of that, this time, because they have such a powerful processor, they also made sure that you have RAM options. Now, be aware, 1 GB is going to cost you $35. That is their $35 target. They never want to exceed that. But if you want to go higher, you have to spend $10. You want to go even higher, you have to spend $10 more. So $55 will give you 4 GB low power DDR4 RAM. So that's amazingly high end, like in terms of RAM modules, like this is the latest integration. Of course, uh, if you buy for, let's say, OnePlus or Samsung, they will be pushing it like the, their RAM modules will be working much higher. But this is really good. Like this is not a corner cutting. This is like high quality RAM. Then uh, because now 4K uh, 4K is becoming a thing, so you need a codec that can handle 4K. So older codec was H.264. Now H.264 is a very a very good, it does, gets the job done. And they had a dedicated codec engine, basically a sort of a dedicated video decoder that can handle that. Now they have a dedicated video decoder that can handle H.265. H.265 is still new. Basically at this point in time, very few things can actually do H.265 properly. Like your computer can do it because it has more than enough horsepower. But if you are talking about media players, very few can do that. This can do that. Like many smart TV simply flat out reject the H.265 uh, video files. So you have to understand that this is a big thing. The H.265 codex is complicated. Using a dedicated processor for it will like uh, solve the problem. So they're pushing it. This time Raspberry Pi is not like holding back. Okay, I'm using from like 2008 technology. This time they're pushing it ahead and they can do upwards of 4k 60 frame per second on single monitor and if you can notice it like they have hdmi 1 and hdmi 2 micro hdmi port they can do hdmi 4k 30 frame per second on two monitors so that is a very significant thing now you might be wondering why the heck a single board computer needs dual display output the sole reason for this is basically for kiosk operator many people wanted to use raspberry Pi for kiosk but they could not because the display output was the same so the, the idea is basically you'll have one uh, monitor that is like when you see in the mcdonald's basically one person has a menu where they are selecting what they want and another person is adding up the cost or like what you want or like order code and all that so for kiosk operation this kind of uh, useful thing uh, it's very useful for some sort of arcade uh, arcade consoles these are also useful so it is really useful and it was demanded by the community that is why it's there it's not like okay they just thought it looked cool they have the processor that they can run it like 4k 30 frame per second is still a big deal very few tvs can do that a cheap tv expensive tv can do that cheap tv i'm talking about cheap tv i'm a poor guy so think about that and then the final limitation they broke is now they're using usb 3.0 circuitry and their uh, real world benchmark can go upwards of 500 mbps that's fast enough that no mechanical hard drive can outsmart it of course ssd can still outperform it but uh, no mechanical hard drive can do this because you can notice it has usb 3 and uh, you can see this time they have uh, led lights on their gigabit port because it's a true gigabit port basically you can transfer data at upwards of like 900 M uh, mb small b ps basically that's you can touch you can touch a very high speed if you're directly transferring from uh, ram you can touch high speed so for practical reason because even if you're transferring at one uh, 
very high speed it won't go anywhere because where will you put it unless you're putting it in ram disk so you can go get upwards of 300 mbps because that's the limitation from usb 3 so that's a very good thing that's good enough that you can have two mechanical hard drive running a dedicated nas with useful speed with useful performance so basically this can be allowed to like breathe now because of there is more ram in this and now there uh, you know the whole ecosystem is matured you can even get what we call as power over ethernet now power over ethernet uh, there is a hat that you have to buy that will allow you to directly extract power from the ethernet itself given the power level of this thing like how much things it can do the amount of processing power it has it's a really useful tool so what would be the outcome of this now think of it this way this will give very big boost for media because even though that's the first thing people wanted to build like the moment raspberry pi uh, raspberry pi came out like the first thing other than making actual circuitry and robots and all that the other thing that people thought of was making a uh, dedicated media center now it is very suitable for that however the limitations of secondary things like the fact that you can't stream to multiple simple people because simply a you don't have the bandwidth basically your hard drive can't feed uh, five six uh, date, uh, hd video to other people simply because the usb 2 is the choke point and on top of that even though let's say somehow you figured out how to bypass that choke point uh, the processor was not faster even if let's say you somehow overclocked it yes people overclocked it people liquid cooled it so let's say you uh, bypass that limitation then the ram was limitation now they have a completely new architecture which is like powerful enough to do all these things so it will give a very big boost and given the fact uh, that there is so many distributions specifically built for a media server it will be a really big blessing to have such a powerful hardware that they can actually use it like this can make a very good uh, uh, home uh, basically media pc a very good caliber one basically you can have connected to directly ethernet to your uh, network uh, network internet and uh, stream data directly from home and it, you can even download uh, videos in the background because it's powerful enough for that so it's it's gonna give a very big boost in media then Everybody wanted to make network attached storage out of this because network attached storage has like kind of very odd place because even if you buy a very cheap low end one, it's way too expensive. Basically, hard drive is not the expensive part, the case is. Now, again, if the case had magical properties or like, you know, it was like a latest and greatest, it can do 8K and all that. It could not do that because it was low volume product. So it was very expensive. People wanted to use this, but it failed simply because it did. the USB 2 choke point is so slow that even your mechanical hard drive can outperform us. Now you don't have to worry about that. So network attached storage will get a big boost. And given the fact that you don't have to worry about the your Ethernet being choked, that's also a big selling point. So network attached storage and media system will get a very very big boost like i am reasonably certain by the end of uh, 2019 basically at the early 2020s like there would be at least two to three kickstarter about uh, making network attached storage using this i can guarantee you that then uh, if you go to the raspberry and website and they are selling it as a basic very low end basic pc is it that short answer yes it's like at this point in time yes like for let's say people who are just doing for, uh, for uh, inventory management all you do is just uh, punch in data in a spreadsheet this puppy can easily handle it all you do is like kiosk management this puppy can handle it and all you do is like web browsing light like if you are a retired person let's say you are uh, retired and you're just like hey i just want to like chill out do some tweets and nothing serious nothing serious don't go about like okay i'm gonna do 4k video editing now nah, no no just no simple chill out this can handle it so that also allows it as a very useful tool for students so like you can give them okay this is a um, this is a computer now you utilize the GOIP pin because the com processor that is backing it is so powerful you can do advanced coding you can do a lot more things you can make uh, smarter appliances so it is uh, it has a really uh, large uh, potential for outcome now the first thing i can easily guarantee you i can like put my money down that network attached storage and media player is the first thing that's gonna flood the market by 2020 so i can guarantee you that however the basic home pc i think they still need to bit more they push they have to push it a bit more next generation a bit more uh, because to usb 3.0 is limited and the fact the final limitation please be aware of it is still relies on sd card now the biggest problem with that is like uh, people have tried to bypass it like it should not use uh, sd card as an os brown because os will uh, wear it out so many people are saying even high quality sandisk or uh, samsung cards they barely last for six months that is a limiting factor so even though you can connect ssd through usb the operating system does not want to go there so there are some way to bypass it break the basically um, the distribution to like okay force it to go through usb system now if because the, this is very early on i'm talking about the video which is very early on if they have addressed that problem awesome that means you can actually use a high level pen drive or uh, basically flat out old ssd 
because SSD is gonna last much longer than a micro SD because micro SD people are saying like if they were continuously using it six months tops like six months maximum so if you're making a network attached storage you don't want to have like okay a five six uh, micro SD card like okay okay so that that is a limitation so be aware of that so I'm not sure whether they have fixed it or not so this was my presentation about Raspberry Pi 4. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't worry about it. You can press dislike. I would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. And subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, watch all my other videos also. And as always, thanks for watching.